a tiling window manager. Why should you use one? That's what we're going to discuss today. Why use a tiling window manager? Well, let's start from the beginning. Are you using a typical desktop environment such as GNOME, KDE, XFC, and Linux? Uh, of course, those of you running Windows or Mac, you're certainly running what I would call a standard desktop environment paradigm. The Mac OS desktop environment is called Aqua, uh, I think. And the, the desktop environment in Windows was called Luna way back in the day when I was running it back in the XP days. I think since then they've had a, a few other desktop environment names. Uh, Metro, I think, was what they called it in Windows 8. Modern, I think, is what they call it now in Windows 10. But here's the question. Is your current desktop environment, is it holding you back? Think about your typical workflow for a minute. Is your desktop a mess when you're working? Uh, so, if you're like most people with a standard desktop environment and standard window managers, um, do you have windows on top of windows, on top of more windows? I mean, think about when you open up half a dozen programs. Uh, your desktop is a complete mess. Uh, programs get lost. You're not exactly sure uh, where your your windows are because you know they're all overlapping each other you're not even sure what order they stacked on top of each other think about when you have multiple windows open do you often you wish you just had more screen space to hold them all of course you have i know when back when i ran a uh, floating window managers i still occasionally do live in floating window managers i often wished i just had more screen real estate for all those windows herein lies the problem your standard desktop environment and window managers, they're just grossly inefficient. Much of this has to do because of the early desktop operating systems that many of us grew up on. So for me, you know, the standard desktop experience and workflow that people my age know is thanks in large part to the, the success of Macintosh and Windows machines back in the 80s and 90s. Most of the desktop since then, they kind of follow that same model. So what's the alternative? What's the solution? Tiling window managers are the solution. Your standard desktop environment has what we call floating windows. So standard desktop environments use what we call a floating window manager. So your windows, of course, float. They float along the screen. You drag them with the mouse. The windows can and often do overlap each other. That is one of the disadvantages to using a floating window manager is that the windows can become hidden. So if I opened up half a dozen or even a dozen windows on this screen, uh, most of the windows are going to be hidden. I'm going to have no idea exactly what programs I have open unless I remember all of them. Many of them are just going to be stacked on top of each other and your desktop quickly it becomes a mess, right? The other thing you should notice is that these floating windows have title bars at the top of them. They also have what we call window decorations, such as the buttons on the side for close, maximize, minimize. These are unneeded, in my opinion. They are a waste of space. And for most tiling window managers, they get rid of all the uh, title bars and window decorations on their windows to save even more space. Another thing you should notice, even when the windows are not overlapping, so if I drag this out to the side here, and I can see both windows entirely, but look at all the wallpaper that is showing. That is a lot of unused desktop space, right? This is really why floating window managers are inefficient. It would be better if the file manager I have open took up one half of the screen and the terminal that I have open took up, took up the other half of the screen and there was not all this unused desktop space. Uh, again, it's a very inefficient way to use the desktop, having all of this unused desktop space. With the exception of maybe opening a single program full screen in a floating window manager, uh, you're really just wasting a lot of your real estate here, your screen real estate. Your standard desktop environment also uses what I like to call a search, select, and use paradigm. So what I'm talking about here is your standard desktop environment is going to come with some kind of way to search for a program, usually some kind of menu system, whether your standard old school menu, such as in XFCE here, or maybe some kind of full screen launcher like you get in something like GNOME or Unity and certain other desktop environments. But anyway, you have to search through some 
sort of menu system for some program to use. You're not exactly sure what you're using, or maybe you are. And actually, most people probably know exactly the program they're looking for when they go through one of these menus. And this is part of one of the problems I have with this particular search, select, and use paradigm that most traditional desktops use is it treats the user kind of like an idiot, right? Uh, it, it treats the user almost like they have absolutely no idea what they're looking for. Anyway, the user sp spends so much time cycling through menus and submenus and looking through all the programs that 99% of them are not appropriate for the task at hand. Then you finally find the the one program that is appropriate. You open that. You spent, you know, 5, 10, 15 seconds uh, cycling through all these menus to get to the program that you finally open. Those seconds, they don't seem like a lot, but they add up quickly. Think about those of you that use standard desktop environments or uh, in Linux, Windows, Mac. How often do you go to a menu to launch a program. You go through a menu, you, you find the program you, you're wanting. You know, it takes, even if you know exactly where it is in the menu system, it takes a few seconds. Those seconds, they add up quickly. Now, a tiling window manager, as the name suggests, it tiles the windows rather than floats them or stacks them. Uh, here in i3 that I'm using today, if I wanted to launch my file manager here in i3, I'm using VIFM for a file manager, I just have a hotkey for it, right? I didn't have to search through any menu. I didn't have to waste any time. Uh, it was a simple two key combination on the keyboard that took, you know, uh, like a tenth of a second to hit. Boom, I've got my file manager open. That is the beauty and the speed of tiling window managers is because typically you configure these things to launch your programs with key bindings because the things you use on a daily basis, you're just gonna have them hot keyed to the keyboard because for the most part with tiling window managers, it is all keyboard driven. You're gonna spend most of your time on the keyboard. By default, there is no wasted screen real estate in tiling window managers. As you can see here in i3, I open one program, it makes it full screen. It uses all the screen real estate, right? It is full screen. There isn't a wasted pixel on the screen right now. So if I open a second program, say I wanted to open up, I don't know, how about HTOP? You know, it splits the screen in half. It puts the file manager on one half and it puts HTOP on the other half, right? Again, no wasted space. We're using the entire screen real estate here. If I wanted to open up another program here, uh, let's see what I want to open up here. How about let's open up Vim. <laughs> Again, it split the screen. This time it split uh, the right-hand column in half, and it divided that half of the column up between HTOP and Vim. It is worth pointing out here, I have no title bars on the windows, right? I have no window decorations. I don't have a close and a maximize and a minimize button. For one thing, with minimize and maximize, you're no longer resizing the windows and clicking on things with the mouse anyway. If you want to resize the windows, you can do that with the keyboard. Say I wanted to make my file manager a little wider. So with a simple, you know, key combination, I can, you know, adjust that thing however I want it. Anyway, uh, I don't need a close button on the windows either because again, a simple key binding takes care of uh, closing a window. So in my case, uh, super shift, C closes a window, again closes the next window, again closes the next window. So that is part of what makes tiling window managers so fast and so efficient. Again, because you don't have that search, select, and use paradigm, you're not fumbling through all these menus trying to discover a program to use. You know, it, it, a tiling window manager assumes you know exactly what you're doing. It doesn't treat you like an idiot. So don't expect to have any kind of built-in menu system. Uh, most tiling window managers will not have any kind of built-in menu system at all. Many won't have a, a built-in like command launcher or, or run launcher. You probably are going to have to add a third-party uh, run launcher if you want to use one. For me, I use Rofi. So uh, D menu is another popular one. So this is just a run command. If for some reason I want to launch a program that I don't have a hotkey for, I can launch Rofi here and then search for it. So if I didn't have a Genie hotkey, you know, I could quickly search for Genie, the Genie text editor, and open that that way. And then, you know, Super Shift C to close it.
But again, I won't be using a run launcher very often. And if you switch to a tiling window manager, you probably won't use a run launcher that often, you know, a couple of times a day maybe, because most of the programs that you run with any sort of regularity, you're probably just going to add a key binding to it in the config file for your tiling window manager. You're just going to have everything hot keyed, at least all the programs you use on a regular basis, just all going to be hot keyed. Your typical desktop experience, though, is point and click, right? It's always about pointing and clicking with the mouse. With a tiling window manager, this is not the case. You won't be using the mouse very much. Uh, everything, for the most part, is keyboard driven. It's not like the, the mouse is forbidden. There is some mouse functionality. You can use the mouse if you really want to. It's just, it's kind of inefficient. And for the most part, the mouse kind of gets in your way in a tiling window manager. Uh, floating windows, by the way, even though tiling window managers, of course, tile, you know, you can tile with them. There is some floating window functionality in almost every tiling window manager. For example, in my config, I have VirtualBox set to be a floating window. It has a floating window. It even has a title bar I can grab. Uh, I could get rid of the title bar if I wanted to in the config. Uh, but, you know, I can grab a hold of this thing and drag it just like a normal window. I can e resize this window just like a normal floating window manager. Or Super Shift C still closes it. The customization possibilities with tiling window managers, uh, it's simply unrivaled by any floating window manager. You will never be able to customize your, your typical desktop environment and your standard floating window manager the way you can customize a tiling window manager. It's just not possible. Now, there are some caveats to those thinking to switching over to a tiling window manager. Honestly, it's not for everyone. I've got to be honest. It takes patience and someone willing to take the time to acclimate themselves to using, you know, this foreign keyboard driven desktop. It's going to be painful. It's going to be painful at first. Not going to lie. But if you stick with it, you might soon realize that it's much faster, much more efficient. And quite frankly, it's easier on the wrist since you rarely handle the mouse. Now you're no longer always doing this. Uh, plus the chicks dig it. This show was made possible by Ansem, Carlos, Chris, Dylan, Leor, Rob, and Tony. They are the producers of this show. The show was also brought to you by all those good ladies and gentlemen. You see all those names on the screen. They are the supporters of this channel. If you would like to support my work, please consider doing so. You will find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.